Andrade and Roosh and Dragon Lee versus the Young Bucks and a mystery partner in the first match of this trios tournament. So they do all the intros. And it's five I got to say one other thing, by the way, very quickly. Dagan says, I'm still shocked the match is next week, but there's got to be a plan. Dagan, I can tell you this. I don't know what it is, but they got a plan. Mm. Let's see what it is. But is it a secret plan? Well, it's clearly a secret plan. I guess if it wasn't a secret, you would know what it is, yeah. So all these guys are out there. Everyone except the mystery partners come out, and they're all, you know, the intro seemed done. And so uh, Justin Roberts looks around, says, well, I guess I'm done. And he starts to leave the ring. And Brandon Cutler pulls him back, taps him on the shoulder, brings him back to the ring. He almost falls down, which Taz laughs at. And then <laughs> Justin takes the sheet of paper, which he has theoretically never read before, brand new to him, had no idea it was coming, is unprepared for, and slips right into Justin Roberts mode. And just goes, he has held, frankly, an unbelievable amount of singles titles and goes through all the whole deal. Tag title this, six-man title there, North Carolina, the whole deal. This was so great and so perfectly done by everyone involved, but mostly Justin Roberts. And I, I think mo I, there were a chance for Kenny before the thing was done, but not everyone seemed to know who this was going to be. And people were shocked and they got to the North Carolina part. And they knew who it was. And the music starts. And it is, of course, Kenneth Omega, who comes out with Don Callis and Michael Nakazawa. Not sure how they're going to handle all that. Andrade, who, of course, has a long history of, Ome uh, uh, of feuding with Omega in Mexico. Very unhappy to see Kenny Omega here. And he's back. And uh, there's a lot to say about this. So we were wondering just how much. Obviously, he's going to be a baby face. And he is. But even in his post-match promo, which they showed on Twitter, I'm sure it will be on Rampage. But he says, I'm not a good guy. I'll still cheat to win if I have to. But he does appreciate the fans. Don Callis is still Don Callis. He's still a jerk and everyone hates him. He's a complete blowhard, although he did give a lot of credit to the Mexican kids in this match. But uh, he comes back and he's got a compression shirt on, a long sleeve compression shirt on, and a, a shoulder harness. Like he may as well have, have had NFL pads and a helmet on. He was so protected in there. And you're watching him work. And the, the story is he has come back too early. And part of this is because he's come back awfully early. And there's some stuff, like when, when, he, when he fucked up the You Can't Escape, I'm pretty sure that was not supposed to happen. No, Vinny. No. Allow me. All right. I, I will alert you as to what's going on. Right. He's been ready to come back for a while. Okay. So this is, this is all storyline. And I'm not sure exactly what they're going to do. But the moment, the moment I saw him come out, it was patently obvious that I don't know if they're winning, but I would be flabbergasted if they didn't go to the finals. And I think what's going to happen is every match he has, he will be shedding one piece of medical accoutrement. I think you're right. So next week, he won't have the shoulder brace. The week after that, he won't have the compression shirt. And eventually, you know, he will be back 100%. So the You Can't Escape, and there were a couple of other spots in there. I mean, listen, I don't know 100%, but I would say with 99% certainty that that's part of this story. The story, literally the story is he has ring rust that he must shake off. Yep. That's the story they're telling through this trios tournament. So, uh, yeah, he, I mean, if you watched everything else that he did, I mean, this fucking guy is unbelievable. Oh, he's God. so fast. He's Daniel so Mega. explosive. He was unbelievable in this match. And he was unbelievable in being awesome, but also working it to fool you yes. into thinking that he missed a spot or two. Can, and, and Kenny Omega wrestling as a crippled version of himself is still in the top 10% of pro wrestlers I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, so 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 good. Uh, he, he he did the you can't escape, and he, he tried to land on his feet and fell on his ass, and he just laughed it off. It was, it, that, that's what fooled me. If he, if he if that was planned to go exactly the way it did, then he's an even better actor than I thought. But his wrestling is tremendous. The stuff with Nick and Dragon Lee it only went like thirty seconds actually, but the, the stuff with Nick and Dragon Lee in the opening was so so awesome. And it was it was they had a party match, but it was a slower than usual party match because Omega was selling his entire body. 
And Callus listed off the, the, the injuries, the shoulder, the neck, the back, the hip, the knee, all this. And so he would constantly run wild, or excuse me, I, I, he, he would run wild and get, get cut off. There was a point where they got to where, where he would make him the hot tag, but he chose not to and did the V-trigger instead. I guess it was the very end of the thinking about it. And uh, eventually the luchadors get their turn to run wild and... and, and, and <laughs> I'm sorry. I've lost my place here because this match is long and there's a lot of stuff, a lot to talk about. But first of all, there's a commercial break and uh, the Frito Lays commercial with Mark Morrison playing Return of the Snacks commercial of the year. That was a great one. But uh, the elite's running wild and they do this very basic three on three suplex. But the way they built up to it, it kept adding one man, then another, then another, and just finally hit just a suplex. People went crazy. That was awesome. The elite just running wild and doing all the triple teams will never get old. And really, you can say the same thing about uh, La Faction and Gobin Oblay. When, when Kenny is set up to do the Terminator dive, and he gets down to the mat and does the bump, 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 bump thing. If you look at the background, Kip Sabian, and I guess we're allowed to say his name now because he finally addressed it. Kip Sabian's there doing the most half-assed, casual clap along with the Terminator thing. I laughed so hard at that. Eventually, finally, we get to where they're working on Omega, and he has a chance to tag out, but he refuses to. He hits a V-trigger instead on a Dragon Lee, and then with great effort and great difficulty, he's able to get Dragon Lee up in the air and plant him with the one-winged angel. And once he hit the move, there was never any doubt. The Young Bucks cut the other guys off, and Kenny got the win. So the elite advance here in the Trios tournament. Dude, these guys are such absolutely fantastic workers because I was convinced that he killed Dragon Lee with that V-trigger. And Dragon Lee was doing like the dead body thing as he tried to get the guy up on his shoulders. And uh, as it turns out, it was a sell job from the moment it happened. I mean, it was planned that way. That was a scheduled finish. He was supposed to do the dead weight thing. And, uh, you know, some people even after hearing that were like, no, they're trying to cover. He was really knocked out. But, uh, you know, let me tell you something. He was playing dead weight, but uh, I want you to find like a 190-pound friend and have them be totally limp and get them up on your shoulders for a V-trigger and let me know how that goes. It ain't happening without a little bit of help. So anyway, he was just, he was awesome in this match. Everybody was great. And uh, even though you, you, uh, you know, were trying to get over everything and... Uh, there was just so much stuff. They actually had to cut time from this match yeah. because a bunch of stuff, again, there's like a weekly problem now. A bunch of stuff earlier in the show went long because guys are just, I don't want to say taking advantage, but some of them are taking advantage. They they are told X number of minutes and they just, they want to get their match done. They want to get their shit in. And, uh, and this is one of those other things. Tony needs to lay down the law. If you're given a fucking time, you've got to hit your cue. Because it's not fair for people later on in the show to have to cut their time because you decided that you were going to go over. And that happened again, and it's happened multiple times over the last several months. And uh, it affected this match as well. And the post-match, which was so rushed that they're going to have to do a video package or something to show everybody what happened because it was just, boom, over. Uh, yeah, the post-match was uh, they yanked off Dragon Lee's mask and, and uh, killed him with something. And they is his own partners. So, yeah, that was uh, beyond... It was so rushed, I actually didn't write it down or forgot about it until you mentioned it right now. But that, that didn't... Well, they uh, turned on him. Andrade gave him the hammerlock DDT. His mask fell off. They beat him up and left him for dead. Totally rushed, made no sense. It was like, what the fuck's going on? The show was great. And then, like, the end was just, what happened? Yeah. Well, it was rushed. It was not perfect. It was not a perfect show, but it was great. It was great. This person says, how do you punish someone for going along in a segment? I don't know. TV fine TV. them. Fine them. Take them off TV. Fine them. Uh, give them even less time next time. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do. They've been doing wrestling on TV for a long time, and guys have gone long for a long time and learned not to go long. It's a, this is not a new problem. Hire fucking Tim Flowers to get that fucking kendo stick and go beat the shit out of people if they go past their time. That worked pretty good in the ICW back in the day. It's the crew out. I look up Avalanche is punching me in the head. Okay, I guess I must have gone long. <laughs> Do a fucking commercial right during their near falls. So That's their match better. ends during the break. Yeah. That'll teach them. And then don't do a recap. Yeah. 
This is how the show begins, really. Asuka does a back kick. Camera cut. She does a back fist. Camera cut. She starts to run. Camera cut. She gets a hip attack. Camera cut. She drops to her knees. Camera cut. She throws a kick. Camera cut. She stands up and screams. Camera cut to people brawling on the floor. I was furious. Do you understand? I wanted to shut the show off and not watch anymore. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.